Hi, my name is Prue McRae and today I want to show you how to braid with the square plate. Now this is a very popular device but it has to be said that some people don't have very much success with it. So what I'd like to do is show you a few little tricks and tips of my own uh, in the hope that you'll be able to give it a go and have a bit more success than, to be honest, I had when I first tried it. When I first tried it, I find that my, found that my braid was a little bit uneven, particularly on one side, and I have seen this with other people, that this is a common problem. But it is a brilliant device, and what it does is it uh, creates flat braids, flat ribbon-like braids in many cases, ribbon or strap-like braids, great for handbag straps, um, for belts, uh, for bracelets, um, and there are many different braid structures that you can do on it. I'm going to concentrate on one particular braid structure for today, and that is um, known by several different things. The Japanese name for it is unegumi, uh, but it is often known as chevron braid um, or just basic flat braid. So let's not worry too much about the name, but let's worry about the secrets for success. Now, first of all, you might find that your plate looks a little bit different. They're made by different people. Sometimes they don't have quite so many slots down the sides. They might have a slightly different numbering system. Don't worry about that. What we're going to try to do with this is concentrate on the shape and the rhythm of the braid to get it right. Before we get started, I'm just going to show you the sort of braids that we're going to make with this. Now, this particular braid structure uh, is made slightly differently uh, depending on the number of cords you have. So I'm going to show you two ways. And here, these first two braids are 10 cord braids. So I will show you that um, technique first. And then these two are 12 cord braids. And they're just a couple of moves that are different. They're basically the same braid. And you, as you can see, you can have a lot of fun with them. You can get a lot of color into them if you want to. You can do them all one color. Basically, the design that you will get if you use different colors is a sort of broken chevron, really, all the way down. Um, and that's you know, particularly pretty when you use um, different tones of the same color. But you can have a lot of fun with playing with your own designs. For this demonstration, I'm going to use a setting cord or rat tail. I'm going to use the one millimeter width. I find that's a good cord to practice with. Its slippery surface means that you can get the tension more easily, but also it gives a very defined braid so you can see where you've made mistakes. If your first braid is a little bit wonky down the sides, don't give up. It really is worth persevering. And the more you practice, the more even your tension will become. So I think all we need to do is get started. So this is the setup for the 10 cord braid. And you'll see that I have got six cords across the top centered on the disc or plate. And I've got four cords along the bottom. For this design, I've chosen to have the central cords, two on the top, two on the bottom, in brown and all the other cords in green and that will give me this design. Um, for the length of cords I recommend that you take the, the normal guideline of three times the finished length for each cord. However, you probably will find that you use less cord for the plate than you do with the round disc. But it's always good to have more to start with and then take a note of what works for you and remember that for next time. So, the way we start is we're going to take these, look at these two central cords. And I'm first of all going to take the cord on the left of the center, on my disc, that's, that's um, slot number five. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to bring it straight across to the side. And again, on my disc or plate, whatever you want to call it, that's on lower KC. Now, Kumihimo is always very symmetrical. So I'm actually going to mirror that move by taking the cord to the right of the center and bringing it across to the other side 
So that for me is uppercase E. Once I've got to this point, I find it's helpful to look at the uh, plate in two halves. So taking this as one half and that as the other half. And we're going to work one half at a time. So what we do is we start on the bottom and we take that chord on the left of the centre and we bring it up, remembering we're only working on this side of the board, to that spare slot straight above. So I'm going 15 to 5. Then I move straight along to its neighbour, number 4 on this board, and bring it down to that empty slot on the bottom. Now I move straight to the neighbour, number 14 here, I move it up to number 4. Now I take the chord right next door to it, number in slot number 3, and bring it down there to 14. So that completes the moves on that side of the board. Now I'm going to copy those moves on the other side. So bottom to that empty slot on the top, the next door one down to that empty slot, move along to the next one and up and the final chord coming down. Now you'll soon find that these moves become quite instinctive because in each case you're just moving from top to bottom and you're moving from the center out first on the left hand side of the board then on the right hand side of the board. When you first start you may need to think about it but don't worry it'll soon become second nature. Now the final move of the sequence is to bring myself back to the starting point. So I take the chords on either side and it doesn't matter which order you do them in because these ones are not going to cross over and bring them up to the top. Now I'm back to the beginning, although my colours have changed position. But don't worry about that, that is just the pattern forming itself. So now all you need to do is repeat that time and time again. So I'm going to do a few more moves because you will start to see the braid moving slightly in the slot and those are the issues I want to talk to you about. So I'm going to go from the left of the middle across, right of the middle across. Now I'm going to do my up and down moves. I'm going to do them on the left hand side, starting from the bottom, up, down, up, down. Now I'm going to do the other side, up, down, up, down. And now I'm going to move my chords at the side back up so I'm in the starting position. Now what you're starting to find is where we started off with the knot in the middle of that slot, it's kind of moving up to the edge and that is a good thing. That will help you to keep your braid even. So whereas with regular kumihimo on the round disc, we want to keep our knot right in the middle, on this type of braiding, I find it helpful to allow that knot to move up to the top. So we're going to repeat those moves a few more times. So I do my side to side moves, which cross over. Now I do my up and downs. Up, down, up, down. And on the other side, up, down, up, down and move the sides up to the top again. Now what some people find is that the braid starts to kind of move up and out. Don't let that happen. I actually recommend for this sort of braiding that you use a weight. Weights are not compulsory. Some people don't like to use them. That's absolutely fine. I personally find a weight quite useful for this sort of braiding. Because I'm braiding over a table, I'm using my fingers underneath, but I would normally be using a weight and that will help keep the braid from rising out. If it does rise up past that edge of the slot, just press it down with your thumb. What you need to keep an eye on is that this is forming in a really nice straight line. Now, we've still got quite a few sequences to do until this braid comes together. So I'm going to speed it up a little bit.
Right, now that I've done a little bit of braiding, I want to show you what's happening on the other side. What you'll find is that the braid forms in quite a spread out fashion on the plate, but it comes together rather more neatly as the braid forms. As I've braided a little bit further, you will see now how the braid, the tendency in the braid is to pull itself up to this line. And that's good, that will keep it nice and straight. But the other thing I want to mention to you about which cords are very crucial uh, in the sides, in the formation of the sides of the braid. And they are these central cords and as you bring them across. So those are the cords you need to pay attention to doing really even moves with them. If sometimes you do this move much more firmly than on other occasions, or if you have a tendency to move one cord more firmly than the other, you will find that the sides of your braid will be wobbly. So those are the two crucial cords, in my opinion, in forming a braid with good tension. So as you work, think about your crossover moves, think about your braid lining up against that, and just try to get into the rhythm of braiding. My other piece of advice is, particularly when you're new to this braid and learning it, try not to stop and start. Whenever you stop your kumihimo, and this applies to all sorts of kumihimo, and you put your board down, the um, cords will start to relax a little bit. And when you start again, it, you will have created a slight difference in tension. So the best possible tension is always achieved by you working from beginning to end in one sitting. Now, obviously, that's not always possible, but when you can, that will give you the best results. So that is how you do the 10 chord flat braid. So this is the setup for the 12 chord flat braid. I've got six chords along the top, six along the bottom. I've started with one chord color in the middle and then I've got the other colors fanning out equally on either side. And that is the setup that I use to make this braid. Now, this is going to be very similar to the way you made the 10 chord braid. All the things I've told you about tension and positioning are the same for this braid as they were for the 10 chord braid. But I'm just going to run you through the steps so you can see which part is different. So, the first part, exactly the same. We do our crossover moves. And then we do the top to bottoms on one side. and then on the other side. And now, this is where the difference is. You want to bring yourself back to the starting position. So instead of these taking these chords up, you take them down. So it is essentially the same braid, but just that one difference that when you've finished your up and down moves, you take the side chords straight down rather than straight up. Well, I really hope that has inspired you. Thank you for watching. And if that's put you on the right track with your flat braids, I'd love to hear about it. Now that you've got the hang of doing it with 10 and 12 chords, you can actually do these same braids with a few more chords. I don't recommend it to begin with because of those initial tension issues, but once you've got the knack, you can go forward. You will find it a bit more difficult because you've got more chords to control. And if you have a number of chords that cannot be divided by four, then you use method one just like 10 can't be divided by four, so exactly. So uh, you use, that was the first method. If it can be divided by four, like 12 can be, then you use the second method. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for watching. And if you'd like to see more, as I always say at the end of these videos, don't forget to subscribe, and then you'll know when I've posted up something new. And also I would like to say that I have got some great information all about braiding 
on the square plate on my website, so do take a look at that. Coming up, I'm going to show you one, possibly two, maybe even more, uh, different braids on the square plate and a few ideas for simple beading ideas with them as well. So that's something to look forward to, I hope. Bye.